Hello and welcome. Our task for today is to find all the real values of x that satisfy this equation and we are going to be doing that in three steps. Now if not for the fact that I have to explain the steps so as to carry as many of us as possible along, we can do this question in less than two minutes. Now the first step is to recognize the fact that we can write it as a power of two. So we have that 8 is equal to 2 raised to power 3. And of course that 8 raised to power x is equal to 2 raised to power 3 raised to power x. But now here is where we recall the law of indices that says that a raised to power m raised to power n is the same as a raised to power m times n and the same as a raised to power n raised to power n. So we can switch the places of these two powers and have that 8 raised to power x is equal to 2 raised to power x cubed. And thus with this, this equation now becomes 2 raised to power x plus 2 raised to power x cubed is equal to 130. Now you can see 2 raised to power x, 2 raised to power x, and this is a real number. So the next thing to do is let y be equal to 2 raised to power x. And now we can rewrite this equation as y plus y cubed is equal to 130. And this brings us to the second step, which is solving this cubic equation for values of y. Now look at the left hand side of this equation. You can see that we can factorize. So we have y into 1 plus y squared. And realize that 130 is 5 times 26. And this is 5 times 1 plus 25. And this is 5 times 1 plus 5 squared. Now you look at this and you look at this. Y, 5, 1. Y squared, 5 squared. So that simply tells you by observation that Y is equal to 5. But there's a problem. We know that this is a cubic equation. And that every cubic equation must have three roots. But then we are in luck because there's a way to check whether the remaining roots are real or a complex conjugate pair. And how do we do that? Now, the first thing is to realize that this cubic equation in the form that it is, is a depressed cubic. That is, a depressed cubic is a cubic equation in the form T cube plus p t plus q is equal to zero where t is the unknown of course and p and q are coefficients of the equation now we can check the nature of the roots of this equation by using the discriminant of this equation the discriminant is the quantity minus 4 p cubed plus 27 q squared. So if we evaluate this quantity for any cubic equation that is in this form, and if this quantity is positive, then we know that that cubic equation, that depressed cubic equation must have three real roots. But if this quantity is negative, then we know that that cubic equation will have one real root and a pair of conjugate complex roots. So we can evaluate this quantity for this equation to make sure that the real root that we have found is the only real root. So writing this equation in this form, we have y cubed plus y. Now this goes over the equality sign, minus 130 is equal to zero. And of course, that gives us that p is equal to 1 and q 
is equal to minus 130. Q is equal to minus 130. So now, evaluating this quantity, we have minus 4 times 1 Q plus 27 times minus 130 squared. Now, I don't need to evaluate this completely because I know that minus 130 squared is a positive number. So, 27 times minus 130 squared must be positive. I know that 4 times 1 cubed is a positive number. So, this is positive. And this is addition. So, positive plus positive is positive. But then, this makes it negative. So, this quantity for this equation is negative. Hence, this cubic equation has only one real root and a pair of complex conjugate roots. So we have found the only real root that is that this equation has. So we can go on with the solution. And of course, this is where we get to the third and final step. And what is that going back to this? So we have that 5 is equal to 2 raised to the power x. And whenever you're solving an exponential equation and you come to this step, to this stage, then the equation is basically done because the only logical thing to do is to take log of both sides. And since we are working in base 2, we are going to take log to base 2. So we have that log to base 2 of 5 is equal to log to base 2 of 2 raised to power x. Now, remember our power law of logarithm that says that log m raised to power n is the same as n times log m. So that simply means that log to base 2 of 5 is equal to, this now comes down, x log to base 2 of 2. And of course, we know that log to base 2 of 2 is 1. So that simply tells us that x is equal to log to base 2 of 5. So we have that x is equal to log to base 2 of 5. That is the answer to our equation. Now we can check this out. When we come here, we have 2 raised to the power log to base 2 of 5 plus 2 raised to the power log to base 2 of 5 cube. Now, you remember that when you have a raised to the power log to base a of any number, this is simply equal to that number. So we have that 2 raised to the power log to base 2 of 5 is simply 5. And likewise here we have 5 raised to the power 3. So this is 5 plus 1, 2, 5. And that is 130. So we have that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. And with that we come to the end of today's exercise. I hope you've learned something. And I hope you've been entertained. See you in the next one.